We're Liz and Dennis, full-time RVers exploring mainland Mexico in our Class C RV. After spending the past several months RVing in the Yucatan Peninsula, we make one last stop to the capital city of Merida, exploring the city both by day and night, making new friends, getting to know Mexico's healthcare system, and of course, eating lots of tasty Mexican food. Welcome to Merida. This has been on our bucket list to explore this city. It's been voted the number one city to live in in the world. It's home for many expats here in Mexico, including our friends Greg and Karen, who are visiting again. So we're staying just outside of the city. Thankfully, they allowed us to park it in their driveway. But if you're coming to Merida, there is a trailer park you can stay in. But this morning, we're doing one of my favorite things to do, no matter where we are in the world. If you followed along for a while, you know I love a good market. And in Merida, every Saturday morning, they have something called a slow food market. They have hundreds of vendors in two locations throughout the city that sell everything from meat, eggs, fish, vegetables, fruits, goods, honey. So we're gonna do a little shopping this morning. I'm really excited. I already wanna buy all the things. So we always make the mistake where we don't eat before we come to the markets. So of course the first stall we stopped in was a lady selling empanadas and tamales. We also got something special called kiwis. I guess it's a very popular dish here in Merida and it's like um, a deep fried flour that's stuffed with typically meat or cheese. But in our case we got vegetarian versions of everything. Hebe, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the detail but there's a lot going on in here and it is amazing. Mm. So good. It's not, it's not just because I'm hungry. Like, this is legit, really good. Let's whoop this down and keep shopping. Major success. We are all sucked up with so much healthy goodies. I just love markets like this. And this is probably the closest to a farmer's market we've seen for what we're familiar with from like the USA or Canada here in Mexico. It's definitely like a thriving community. I get why expats love Merida so much. If you're coming to Merida for the first time, there's plenty to do outside of the city center, including visiting a cenote and an archeological zone in one spot. GB, GB, Deltoon. No, no. Bill Chaltoon. Nailed it. And it, apparently, it's a pretty unique and influential site, even though it's rather small. It hit about 20,000 inhabitants at its peak, and it was one of the cities that influenced the change from a religious center of the city to a market and urban style city center. We were little burnt out on archaeological zones. <laughs> We've been going to a ton and we absolutely love learning about the history for um, the ancient civilizations here in Mexico, but we decided to pass on this one because the cenote is closed due to COVID yeah. and parts of the archaeological zone are closed as well because of damage from the hurricane and flooding in certain areas. So we just felt for the 260 peso entrance fee per person that we could spend that money elsewhere in Merida and kind of get a little bit more diversity for what we've been doing lately. Get a better taste of the city itself. So if you're coming here, hopefully the cenote will be open so that you can enjoy, get to learn a little bit about the Mayan history and culture here at this archeological zone. But I think for us, we're gonna take a dip in the pool, do some work and hit the town of Merida. Buenos dias, it's another wonderful day in Merida and it is a scorcher. Yeah, it's like 92 today. today. Oh my gosh, it is very warm. And this is in the middle of February where everyone else is covered in snow. We are sweating our butts off. I can't even imagine Merida in the worst months, April and May. Woo! But we decided to come explore a little bit of the centro. But our first stop for today is coming to the extremely large market here, San Bernito Mercado. It is massive. It's massive and it's indoors, so hopefully we're going to be able to beat the heat a little bit while we're in here. Dos tacos de harina 
de carne asada para llevar. Oh yeah. So the first thing we did, of course, when we got to the Mercado, walk straight to the food vendors. So we're gonna get some nachos with pastora. Excellent. We haven't had nachos very much throughout Mexico. It doesn't seem to be a super popular thing in the other states that we visited. But here in the Yucatan and the Quintana Roo, it seems to be quite popular. I don't know if that's just because of the sheer amount of expats. I definitely think nachos is more of a Tex-Mex kind of vibe. So I don't know if that's the inspiration here or if this is just the region it originated from. So if you know the answer, we'd love to hear more. Put it in the comments so that we can find out if nachos is totally a gringo thing or a Yucatecan thing. One thing we've noticed when we come to markets in Mexico is they're really organized. There's always the similar items being sold in one section. So all of the goods for sale will be in one area, same for the meats, vegetables, and of course it's true here for the food. So there's just a huge long strip of all of these vendors pretty much selling the exact same types of meats. So we always just look for the place that has the most people. It's typically a good indicator. Yeah, my rule of thumb is if they're not screaming and like basically begging you to come to the shop and there's already a bunch of people sitting down, that's the one you should go with because usually that's the local favorite and it's not going to disappoint. all the time if you need to speak Spanish to come to Mexico. The more Spanish you know, the more it will help. And I definitely encourage you to try and learn as much Spanish as possible. I think it just enhances your experience tremendously. We just ended up passing a spice shop in the market and we saw an odd looking herb or flower and we asked him what it was. Supposedly it's called chupul. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. But if children are having a hard time with pronunciation, they may have a speech impediment, or maybe they're not speaking at all, they believe here in the Yucatan that you can take this flower and you can spin it inside of the child's mouth nine times, and it's supposed to help them be able to speak. So we would have never learned little things like this if we didn't speak the language. So we definitely recommend trying as much as you can. There's lots of free resources to help you with your Spanish, and then just speaking when you're around people. It's okay if you sound silly, everyone's really friendly about speaking to you. You just kind of got to let it go and give it a try. The next stop for the day is Parque Principal. It's the main square in the town center in the center of Merida. And we ended up meeting someone who just came up to us to offer a card for the restaurant, but we told him we weren't hungry and he started talking to us and so nice, gave us so many recommendations. We are totally doing Merida all wrong. So if you're coming here, here are a few suggestions. If you are looking for a good food market where you would come to eat, you wanna to go to Parque Santiago. And then on every Saturday and Sunday, there's also something called La Mercado Maya. So the Maya market, which is gonna have all different types of like artisanal goods that are available for sale. And that is every weekend until 4 p.m. So unfortunately, we're probably going to miss it today, but hopefully you'll be able to enjoy it when you come. Stop. So we came to Santa Lucia Park. This is another little plaza. 
that uh, has tons of restaurants on it and down the street is a gelato shop that has some really unique flavors like Parmesan cheese ice cream which sounds really weird but I'm sure it is tasty. We ended up going for flan de Cuba, Cubano I believe, and a cardamom ice cream. We're hoping this is going to pick us up because I'm not going to lie, both of us are a little grumpy and tired. I think it's from all the heat. It's just a lot for us. It's our first time in this heat for a while. Mm. This is going to pick you up. We finished the evening off having an incredible meal at Micaela Mar Ilenia, a popular seafood restaurant serving craft cocktails and a great mezcal selection. Everything we got, including two types of carajillos, a regional drink from the Yucatan Peninsula made with liquor 43 and espresso, were super rico. If you're a Mexican national, you can skip this part of the video because you've done this before. If you're an American and you're intrigued by the Mexican healthcare system, follow us along as we get our teeth cleaned in Mexico. A lot of people come to Mexico to get their teeth done because the cost for medical care in general is significantly cheaper than you might find in the United States and can be a lot quicker than you might find in Canada. So it's a popular um, activity, especially for people in border towns, sometimes they'll cross, come get their teeth cleaned, get root canals or crowns put on, whatever is needed for your teeth. Greg and Karen have good dentists and medical professionals here in Merida, so we felt we could trust their opinion on who to go to. So today, our big goal for the day is to get our Dientes limpiando cleaned. I don't know how to say it in the past tense. We're getting our teeth cleaned. This is very interesting. Yeah, it's a really fancy office. Definitely speak perfect English. And they gave us a mouth rinse to swish around, and then we have to spin the sink before we can even see the dentist. The COVID guidelines are fierce here. Fierce. Yes. It's hilarious that the office is now watching our channel. So right now would be a little reminder if you haven't subscribed. Subscribe. We can officially check teeth cleaning dentist visit off of our Mexico bucket list. <laughs> it was very professional, clean, quick, and affordable. For the two of us to get our teeth cleaned, it costs around 80 US dollars, 1600 pesos. And I think this was like the higher end, nicer dentist because that that was a very luxurious office. Now, we're gonna show you a little bit more around Merida. What do you do after you get your teeth cleaned? Put coffee on top of it, of course. Taint our beautiful teeth. That's all right, we wanted some breakfast. So we ended up coming to Paseo de Montejo, which is a really famous street that runs through the center of Merida, heading toward the historic center. That's where you'll find all of those beautiful mansions from the heyday of Merida's time back in the 1800s, early 1900s. So we ended up coming to Morago Cafe, and I'm not gonna lie, their coffee art game is strong. They serve traditional-ish breakfast. Dennis got chilaquiles, I'm pretty sure I got eggs benedict. If you're looking for more traditional Yucatecan food, there are tons of restaurants all throughout Merida that will have all of the different regional dishes from the general Yucatan Peninsula, but specifically to the Yucatan state. So if you've never tried things like cochinita pibil or kibis, any of the typical dishes from this area, I definitely suggest taking that route. We've had a lot of those recipes as we've been traveling throughout, so we just decided to go for something a little bit slightly more Americanized today, but we're okay with that. It's definitely like a Mexican eggs benedict, except they use a cheese sauce and put chaya in it, which is um, a Mayan plant that's kind of like spinach. It's delicious. If 
be in Merida on the weekend, we definitely suggest walking or bicycling down the Paseo de Montejo. They close it down so it's pedestrian or bikes only, no cars are allowed. It's every Sunday from 9 to I believe 12 p.m. and it's a great way to get up close to some of the beautiful historic mansions. There's museums, restaurants, hotels, so you can also kind of walk in a few of them and see how grand and amazing some of these mansions would have been in their heyday. I mean, they're still grand and beautiful today, but imagine living in that. Like, imagine this being your home. are being restored or being used as businesses today, including this one, which is Quinta Montes Molina, which is a house that has been well preserved and now turned into a museum. So you can actually go inside and get a tour to see what it would have been like to live here during the 1800s when Hennequin was in prime production, making this one of the richest cities in the entire world. These buildings would have taken decades to build. They even brought materials over from Europe. They have real Carrera marble as the floors, and you can totally see the European influence in all of the mansions. The properties are spectacular. It's 85 pesos if you're interested in doing a tour. Unfortunately, we don't have time for this, this go around, but it's definitely something we'll be visiting when we return to Merida in the future. Merida is one of the safest cities, not just in all of Mexico, but actually in the entire world. And it's one of the reasons that expats love living here so much. Something I personally noticed that I'd say is different between other cities we visited in Mexico is just how clean, organized, and beautiful the city is. It parts in times, it feels like you're walking through a European city, not so much a city here in Mexico. And I think its scale, architecture, history, and design reminds us a lot of Mexico City, just a much smaller version. But there's cops everywhere. Last night on our drive home from dinner, they actually had a breathalyzer or DUI stop and they were testing every single person. So there's always cops everywhere we've been on the street. It's definitely a safe city. In Merida, there is a huge cantina culture and that's exactly what we're going to do tonight. We're going to go to two different cantinas. We are being COVID safe. We're going to open air cantinas. There is a ton. Apparently, it's kind of like Spain, where if you go in and you order a drink or enough drinks, they will give you free botanas, which are like tapas. But I'm excited because I'm hungry and I could always go for a drink. Cantinas have been a part of life in Mexico for centuries. Originally a men's only bar, cantinas were a place where working men could gather, drink, and socialize in the centro, having access to cheap beer and snacks. Cantinas have come a long way, with most now allowing women these days. There are a wide variety of cantinas you can visit throughout Mexico, but particularly in Merida. Zalbai Cantina is not your everyday rowdy place. The owner, an expat musician who plays in the Yucatan Orchestra, wanted to create a laid-back hub for art, culture, and music, particularly jazz, blues, and R&B. We are musicians and artists, and so all the art we have in the bar is for sale, and it's from Cuba and Russia and the United States, all local artists from elsewhere who live here now selling their art, and we have live music from all, all sides of the world playing here every single night at 7 o'clock. Last night was a blast. We ended up closing down the cantina, which right now is just until 10 o'clock, and that's COVID hours. Normally, cantina life could go well into the night and early mornings. I get the appeal for why so many expats decide to call this home and why this city continuously is voted one of the top cities in the world to live. We wanna give you guys a little something extra this week. We are going to be having another bonus video coming out this Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So in addition to our normal weekly vlogs, we'll have another one drop in soon. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, show some love by giving it a like, thumbs up, and of course, subscribing. We can't wait to see you on our next one. P.S. Greg and Karen, we can never say thank you enough. Thank you for having us. Thank you for letting us mooch talk. Thank you for being so awesome. 
Todd and Tom. We had a blast with you last night. It was great meeting you. We hope we have many more cantina crawls in the future. I don't know how to drive one of these things. And as real estate investors, we've always kind of had our eye out at each city we visited for potential investment properties. We're not sure what we're gonna do. We love this city, we love its location. I do think it's a really good opportunity. I want my coffee every morning to taste like this. It'd be that's so unproductive, but it's so good. And we're 10 minutes early for the first time in our entire life. I'm pretty sure. Okay, I don't know how to say appointment. There's a lot of words I don't know here. I'm sure they speak Spanish or English, but. Can I miss una cita para nueve de la mañana? You didn't know I'm fluent now, guys.